<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Maurizio Pochettino winning a trophy already at Chelsea Football Club. That's that's what we do. We just win trophies. <laughs> Look, banter aside, um, a good victory. But honestly, it was a bit of a it was a bit of a lackluster showing altogether. There's a whole heap of stuff that I want to talk to you about in regards to the match review for this particular match. Chelsea two Fulham nil, and whole heap of news. Chelsea transfer news. Axel Desrc. Um, uh, Leslie Ugachukwu and many more that we got to go through. Mbappe as well. That's mad. Let's 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 go. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the Chelsea. Uh, welcome back to the other side of the coin. I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing. I was gonna say welcome back to the Chelsea other side of the coins news and i was gonna jumble things up but look thank you for joining ladies and gentlemen chelsea two fulham nil match reaction look um let, let's talk about some positive i don't want to go through every single performance every single player and 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 you know what happened in the in the entire match let's go through some positives let's go through some negatives and i think that will probably be you know sufficient enough as a, as a match review for this particular match which Overall, I felt a bit underwhelming. Um, maybe the heat had something to do with it. Um, I felt like Chelsea all throughout that particular match, you know, for the people that watched it, it felt like we could have gone to a third, fourth key if we really wanted to. We kind of played in the second key. And the opposition, Fulham, they really didn't pose any sort of threat, if I'm being absolutely honest. Uh, there were a couple of moments here and there in the second half, but overall, they did not look good one bit. And us... Probably looked at that and also summed up the situation with the weather you know, being so hot. We thought, you know what, we probably don't need to exert that much effort, exert that much energy. And we still ended up winning 2-0. So it just kind of shows, one, the quality that we have, but also the lack of quality that Fulham also um, showed in this particular match. Look, some of the positives I'll have to start. First half, Kani Chukumika. You know, I've been waiting for Kani Chukumika to really impose himself in a particular match, and I think he's done that in this particular match. Played from the right side, but more tucked in in the midfield. Helped a lot in the build-up, helped a lot in midfield, and was, you know, uh, quite creative as, as much as he could be, along with, you know, Christopher Nkunku, who was is, who is playing just behind Mason uh, Burster. Mason Burster, by, by the way. Young needs a loan. Uh, he definitely cannot play as a striker for us at the moment. Looked very shaky all throughout the match. So, Kani Chukumika for me, for the first time in this preseason, really showed me. And I've been, you know how much I love Kani Chukumika. I wanted Kani Chukumika to feature a lot more last season. And this preseason, I was buzzing to see Kani Chukumika. He did a few things, bits and pieces, really, really well. In my perspective, I know some of you guys probably thinking uh, Chukumika probably has been fairly good in the preseason. For me, there's things that he's done well. Obviously, a couple of assists. Uh, one for, I believe, um, Nkunku, one for Nicholas Jackson, maybe. Um, so overall, no, not Nicholas Jackson, Ian Martin. Uh, overall, there was bits and pieces that I liked about uh, Chukamika, and there were bits and pieces that I didn't like. Some Sometimes getting dispossessed, sometimes, you know, his passes pass is a bit missed time. But this particular match, ladies and gentlemen, for me, in the first half, he was a standout. Obviously, there was a whole heap of changes throughout the match. I actually thought maybe Pochettino might be going out and keeping a team um, that is going to be, you know, slowly lining up for that Liverpool game. I thought that he's, he's going to start getting serious in terms of the lineup. But he wanted to continue to experiment. Maybe the next one against Dortmund, we'll get to see some level of a, you know, the, the, the lineup that is going to be somewhat resembling, resembling the one against um, yeah, Liverpool. Because we do need to start shaping up for our, you know, the 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 the, the important eleven that's going to start down the track in the Premier League season. But some people are saying there's a couple of more games to actually happen before the preseason match in indoor closed door matches in in Cobham. So maybe Pochettino still has a bit more time to figure out exactly who he wants to start playing against Liverpool. The other performer in the first half, I'll have to say, is Nkunku for me was very very good as well. Gets himself that goal. Um, it's his off the ball work rate that really showed uh, showed me something today. Yeah, you know, dropping in deep to help out in build up. He wasn't just hanging about up front, but 
at times dropping in to win the ball back as well from the opposition. So for me, that was good to see. Gets himself another goal, three goals in this preseason. He looks so fast. He looks very busy and he's always on the lookout for the give and go, give and go. Uh, wanted to play those short passes, one, two, and, and really breaking up the opposition. So that was good to see. Uh, in, in the back line, Bashir Humphreys was once again a standout performer for me, ladies and gentlemen. Bashir Humphreys, obviously Tiago Silva, uh, the less we talk about Tiago Silva, I mean, he's just sensational. Uh, there's, there's no need to waste time and talk about his quality. Obviously, he scored the goal as well, bullet header. But Bashir Humphreys, I don't know that if there's been any single preseason game in this particular preseason, obviously, that, that there's been any issues with him. He's been pretty much flawless. And he looks very composed, very, very good on the ball and makes the right decision in the back. Um, you know, doesn't feel like he's under pressure or panicking or looks shaky. He looks quite assured of, about his movements. So I really like Bishy Humphrey's game uh, 100%. Um, Gabriel Solina. So some of the negatives in the first half, we have to do some positives, negatives for both the halves because two different teams. Solina for sure, for all the people that have been saying he's ready. Is he ready to take over from Kepa? Look. Kepa is definitely not the answer, but slowly enough for the time being, as a 19-year-old goalkeeper, needs a loan out there. Um, he looked shaky all throughout that particular first half. So every time the ball got to his feet and he was looking to distribute, he looked a bit slow, he looked a bit clueless at times and, and, and sort of hesitated. So we can't have that in the Premier League. He's going to get eaten up. He needs a loan. He's definitely not ready at this level as yet. Uh, Malagusto, once again, strong performance. Malagusto, for me, will start against Liverpool. Yeah, although Reese James came on in the second half, didn't look bad, uh, to be honest, but at the same time, wasn't extremely good as well. He's slowly building up. He came late into the preseason um, because of, of that illness that he had. For me, Malagusto, strength, man, strength. Um, is looking amazing. In this game, he didn't get to bomb up too much because Kukurea was the one who was... Uh, sorry, uh, Chilwell was the one that was bombing forward. Look, Chilwell, besides that corner... That assist from the corner. I think Chilwell, to be honest, some of his first touches was wild. Chilwell was looking funny that entire half. And in the second half as well, even Kukurea, once again, getting caught out with speed um, on, the, on, that, on that right side of Fulham and left side of ours. Um, yeah, if anything, in the second half, and we're going to get to Lewis Hall. Lewis Hall was the one who looked really good. I'm just surprised that now... You know, having such iffy performances from those two players, Chilwell and and Kukurea, surprised that we didn't see more of Lewis Hall uh, in this preseason, and it makes me think that he's going to go out on alone. But once again, he was probably the standout in the in the second half. So, first half, I'm just trying to think if there was any other players that did well. Santos more, for sure in midfield. Andre Santos, this guy's a, a damn good midfielder. He's there's no doubts about this. A damn good midfielder, and uh, I'm pretty positive he's going to stick around at Chelsea Football Club in, in this upcoming season. There was some tweets that were floating around from Di Marzio saying that, you know, he's potentially, you know, could be going out on a loan to one of the Serie A teams. There's no way. No way we're letting Andre Santos go, man. Andre Santos looks so assured on the ball. It seems combative as well. Uh, seems to be very good uh, when it comes to building up uh, and being the deepest midfielder. It seems to con be a bit of a conductor, you know, orchestrating the moves and, and organizing the, the play. Enzo Fernandez, he needs to start waking up a little bit, I have to say. Enzo Fernandez, obviously, with the ball, he's very good. Missed a golden opportunity to score a goal. You cannot be missing those. That That is... 100% a goal. That needs to be a goal. Nice layoff from Nkunku, uh, the, the, which started off from Sterling. Sterling, we'll get to Sterling. Um, but Enzo Fernandez, uh, there are a couple of times, once again, in this particular match where, you know, the opposition just walked through our midfield. And Enzo Fernandez has got to tighten up a little bit more off the ball. And with the ball, that should have been a goal. Um, so Enzo Fernandez, time to slowly wake up, wake up, my man. Wakey, wakey. Premier League season just around the corner. Sterling first half. Look, some things were good, some things not that great. Um, and uh, yeah, it was his movement um, that that led to Nkunku then passing it to Enzo Fernandez, uh, which Enzo Fernandez missed. Look, Sterling, we'll see, we'll see. The, the question mark is still there. I don't think there's any other performers to really comment on in the first half. Pretty much covered what I needed to. In the second half, look, standout Lewis Hall. Uh, also, Nicholas Jackson for me. Sensational. The way his work rate drops in a little bit deeper to win the ball back and then start counters. He was threatening. All along, he was threatening. Bit disappointed with uh, Angelo Gabriel. Really got so excited to see him come on. 
Uh, but it was a bit underwhelming in the final third. Some of his decision-making wasn't good. So we'll see what the future holds for Angelo Gabriel, whether he goes out on loan. But yeah, Lewis Hall, his crossing was pinpoint, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely pinpoint crossing. There was one cross that was for Nicholas Jackson. Had Nicholas Jackson probably moved a little bit earlier, probably could have connected a top-notch um, hit on that volley. Um can't really think of anyone else in the second half that really caught my eye. Chasere uh, Casade slowly came into the game. Uh, the first 20 minutes of the second half, he looked shaky. He looked very, very shaky. Uh, but eventually enough, sort of, you know, looked looked a lot better, comfortable. I still want him in, in, in the squad for next season. Gallagher, uh, once again, the less we speak about Gallagher, probably better. There was one good block from him, but with the ball... Uh, on his feet. I don't think he's that is that good. And we all know that. Chalabar got injured. We'll talk about Chalabar. So uh let's let's go through some news. So that's pretty much what I had to what I have to say about the match. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about that match. Good, we won. Good, we got more fitness. Good, we got a little bit more sharpness. Uh, we got to see some different combinations that I probably wouldn't fancy down the track. Want to see more of uh, the the regular 11s that's gonna start. But yeah, maybe the heat had something to do with that as well, with, with our performance being a little bit lackluster, a little bit slower. Uh, but you let me know in the comment section what you thought about that. Uh, Reese James, ladies and gentlemen, and Thiago Silva both co-carrying the trophy uh, that we've won. Premier League Summer Series in the United States. Obviously, Thiago Silva captain in the first half, Reese James captain in the second half. That's why they're both carrying the two together next up some uh, transfer news ladies and gentlemen exclusive chelsea have reached an agreement in principle with as monaco to sign defender axel this i see chelsea set to pay monaco 45 million euros which is approximately about 38 million pounds 25 year old france international right center back option for final out for considerable period due to knee injury look let me give you guys my quick thoughts on this one chelsea 100 does not rate chalaba chalaba needs to go chalaba left that match injured we'll talk about his uh, injury a little bit uh doesn't look too serious but if we want to sell him he needs to be fit bottom line chelsea don't rate him uh, even though i find it a bit unnecessary to get another cb now i just thought that chalaba was never going to start for us it was always going to be silva and lewa colwell chalaba was going to be the backup for the timing let's keep him as a backup this is enough backup uh, and, and and then down the track we can we can get another defender. But I think Chelsea just looking ahead. They're planning ahead. They're thinking that maybe Thiago Silva is not going to be sticking around after this season. Wesley Fofana, massive question marks whether he's going to have a Chelsea career or not with the level of injuries that he's having. And of course, Chalaba. They just don't rate Chalaba. So uh, Axel de Sassi comes into the frame. Look, for me, Axel de Sassi... I've not watched too much of Monaco, but I've seen uh, a bit, bits and pieces of Axel de Sassi live as well, well whenever I've watched Monaco. He's a strong unit, physical specimen. He's huge. Uh, Ariel Jules is a monster. Um, on the right side, a lot of people talk, talk, talk to me about in, in regards to Liwa Cole being on the left side, the line-breaking passes from deep. Axel de Sassi has that ability. So for me, 38 million. You know, Buddy Shield was there as well. You know, he can partner up with Buddy Shield down the track. Lawrence Stewart, obviously the linchpin in this particular move. He knows all about Monaco, knows a lot about French Liga. The French contingency continues to build at Chelsea Football, but we won't turn out to be the France international team very, very soon. So, uh, look, Axel de Sassi, I think, I think it's, a, it's a very, very good purchase. I'm not even going to lie. I, I like a lot of things about Axel de Sassi. I just thought it wasn't necessary at the timing. But as I said, Chelsea's probably looking ahead. So let me know your thoughts in regards to Axel de Sassi. For me, it's a good price. Trevor Chalaba, this is coming from Neza Kinsella. Trevor Chalaba left the stadium with light bandage on his right thigh. So hopefully it's not um, it's not something serious and that we can potentially let go of him. Apparently, West Ham are looking to get him. Um, let's let's move him now. He's surplus to requirements. He was apparently surplus to requirements even after Wesley Fofana's injury. You thought that maybe he's got an opportunity then. But he was surplus to requirements. Then now he, he's going to be definitely surplus to requirements with Axel de Sassi. It is a here we go for Axel de Sassi from Fabrizio Romano. So now, Chalaba, you got no more future. At Chelsea Football Club, Mauricio Pochettino says he is open to signing a new central defender amid Axel de Sassi news. He also told me Leslie 
Ogachukwu will go on loan regardless of whether he joins up in preseason tomorrow or not. So that's the latest in regards to Leslie Ogachukwu. To all the people that got me excited that he might stick around, he is the next big thing, this, that, the other. He is 100% going on a loan to most likely Strasbourg. Strasbourg, watch along. We have to. Strasbourg is like our second team. How can I not do a watch along on Strasbourg matches? We have to check out some of our loanee players that are going to be going there. Uh, Ugachuku being one of them, Gabriel, uh, Angelo Gabriel being the other one. Maybe there could be another one with Eli Wahi if we end up buying him. So, yes, yeah, Strasbourg, you you are our second team and we shall watch you. So, Ugachuku, ladies and gentlemen, is going out on a loan. Once again, let me know your thoughts on both of these, uh, I suppose, um, acts of this I see that I just said. And, and uh, Ugachuku, how are you feeling? Him going on a loan. Chelsea attempt to negotiate cash plus player deal to sign Kylian Mbappe. Uh, What's happening here? Why are we having this news? Duncan, Duncan Castle. Duncan Castle. Duncan Castles. What are you doing, brother? I know you're here to feed your family. You need this articles to pop off and anything in regards to Mbappe is going to pop off. Ladies and gentlemen, why is Mbappe going to come to Chelsea Football Club? You tell me. Uh, without even entertaining this news, negotiate cash plus player deal to sign M Kylian Mbappe. We could potentially give them Ziyech. We could potentially give them Lukaku. A lot, many different permutations can happen here. Some will even throw in Sterling. Why is Kylian Mbappe going to come to Chelsea? You tell me. I know there's a lot of French players here. Maybe he could entertain that, but there's no European football here, you know. And, and uh, what, what was it recently? Al Hilal, 200 million or 200 plus million in record fee. That was going to be the world record fee for a particular player. <sighs> How are we doing this deal? And what wages are we going to pay this guy? Al Hilal was going to was going to give him for one year 700 million euros. What wages are we going to give him? This is not going to happen, ladies. It's simply not going to happen. I can't see how he comes. He's He's got things done with Real Madrid. He's gone to Real Madrid. He's already declined Saudi Pro League. So he's definitely got his eyes set on Real Madrid. He's going to be a Real Madrid player. No doubts about that. What happens to him this season? I don't know. PSG are in a bit of a mess. They're in a bit of a conundrum. They cannot get him to sign a contract extension. And he don't. he's not bothered. He's willing to stick around and be a free agent next season and go to Real Madrid straight away. So is there a possibility to get something done this season? It's too far-fetched for me. Honestly, this is way too far-fetched. So I'm going to leave it at that. I think this is a bit of a BS story. I, I don't know why Duncan Castles um, thought about popping that news and, and really creating a chaos in the Chelsea fan base, like as if we need more chaos. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, understand Chelsea have internally decided on targeting Brighton Robert Sanchez as a goalkeeper to provide competition for Kepa. Brighton, oh, it's a, it's a particular club that we deal so well with. They're very easy to get along with. We've got great history with them. Yeah, why not? Why not? Let's do it again with Brighton. Oh, my God. Uh, but as of last week, no contact made yet with players. So, look, Sanchez... During Graham Potter's time at Brighton, I rated this. I still rate this goalkeeper. I really like this goalkeeper. He's, he's got he's got good distribution. He's a good shot stopper. I don't mind him being our keeper, but I don't want to deal with Brighton ever again. After this Caicedo deal is done, I don't want to deal. Like, let's take a break. Let's separate from each other. Let's have a break. Uh, you know, uh, you go and see others. We go and see other people. We'll, we'll have relationships elsewhere. This relationship has become toxic between us two. Um, it, it was a bit lovey-dovey in the beginning, but now now we we are harming each other. We are harming each other. It's not love anymore. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's craziness. So let's separate. You go your way. We chill for a couple of years and then maybe we come into a conversation. Right now, let's not deal with Brighton anymore. I'm, I'm tired of dealing with Brighton. How much are they going to charge us for Robert Sanchez? Like, I'm sick and tired. So just get the Caicedo deal done and let's move on. We'll look at a goalkeeper elsewhere. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts on everything we talked about. The match, the um, you know all the different transfer news. So, yeah, once again. In the comment section, let me know. Smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe, hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. I shall see you guys for a live stream tomorrow. Big live stream tomorrow. Have to. We're going to talk about Axel this. I see. We're going to talk about a whole heap of other things that's popping off. So until next time, see ya and take care.